What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Madison Assembly podcast. I'm David. I'm Cody. And I'm Jason. And today we got an awesome episode for you. But before that, got to check in with the boys. How we doing? Doing great. Nice, crisp uh, fall. I guess it's not fall yet, but the morning felt great. Get you excited for the weather. It's one of those days I am just tired. I don't know why. <laughs> I tired. think it might be my old age. Tired, yeah. tired in what way? Well, you're only 47. Ready to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what big boy does to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what it does. So we're, we ate lunch where? Frisch's big boy. Frisch's big boy. I think that might be. I might need a siesta. You might need a big boy might nap. Need a siesta. A big boy nap. Where y'all at on naps? Like They're gold. <laughs> okay, please elaborate. <laughs> I was an idiot as a kid to not take advantage of naps. I don't want to go to bed, Mom. Yeah. Granted, yeah. you had more energy back then, but oof. Any chance I get, I'll, I'll doze off on the couch watching TV. And okay, okay. See, see, that's different. What what qualifies as a nap? A short sleeping period during the day. <laughs> a little window. okay. Because I've actually heard a lot of people make this argument that a nap is choosing to go into a room, get into a bed, and fall asleep with the intention of re- recharging your batteries for the rest of the day. Hmm. That if you're just sitting there on the couch watching TV and you happen to fall asleep, you didn't take a nap. You just fell asleep. Yeah, you have to silence everything out, I think. And plus, you have to make sure everything's dark. I got these little this little thing you put over your eyes. What do you call that? It's like a face mask. A face mask. And man, I sleep like a baby. But for me, the only day I can really take a nap is Sunday afternoons. I don't know why. You're coming off that high, that church. It, during the week, yeah. it's hard for me. To it's an do adrenaline that. rush for sure. Yeah, I, I feel the most drained and tired Sunday afternoon because I've been up since six thirty in the morning. Yeah, and you're on a rush. You're you're in you're in what I what Cody and I have talked about. We, I call it game mode. Game mode. You know, and at that point, you're you're, you're, you're you're going through the game. You're you're on the you're then you're on the high of the game went well and you're excited about it. Then you get in the car and you go home and you're like, oh my gosh, I am so tired right now. M A G. It's in the game. <laughs> game mode. <laughs> That needs to be our next sound bite. <laughs> EA Sports. Yeah. It's in the game. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes when I take a nap, though, and I get up and I've slept too long, it's hard to go to sleep that night, but also I don't feel very good. You know, just kind of feel drowsy or something's wrong. I don't know. Do you guys ever feel that way sometimes? No, well, I was, that's what I was going to ask because for me, I'm hit or miss on naps. If I fall asleep and take a nap and I've been asleep for like more than an hour, I wake up feeling terrible. Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel groggy. I feel, you know you know, kind of like my head hurts sometimes. And yeah. they say there's a science to that, that a lot of times when you wake up in the middle of an REM cycle, then your your brain hasn't reset as opposed to when you're sleeping at night and you go through an REM cycle, your brain comes down, then it goes up, then it hmm. comes down. So if you're in the middle of one of those up cycles and you wake up, your brain's like, okay, I was about to be done here. Yeah. I'm not done processing. You so. should create a podcast that says, hey, here's where you are on your cycle wow. of sleep, you know. As opposed not to not a podcast, I mean an app, an yeah. app for your phone that you can read. Yeah, you know, watch. so I'm watching myself during my REM cycle. Is that what you <laughs> your REM cycle? <laughs> if you can watch yourself while you're sleeping, that no, is very no, impressive. When you wake up, you can kind of see where you were at in the dip and then the yeah. highs of that. Now, the best time to take a nap, though, is on a Sunday afternoon when you go home. It's cool outside, the fall breeze. You just mm. open all the windows in the house. Cuddle up to a nice book. Cuddle up. Yeah. Oh, have a nice blanket. <laughs> oh, man. When are you most tired and find yourself falling asleep, taking a nap? Um, when I'm most drained, it's Wednesday evening, which I know it's like, oh, that's that's at night. But that's that's kind of my game day, yeah. right, Wednesday. Um, it's just busy from morning to night. Um, but Sunday Sunday afternoons, it's sort of, you know, the the unofficial end yeah. to, to your week and – whether it was a stressful week, whether it was busy, whether it was fun. It's just like, okay, I got like four to six hours before I head to bed that I can just lay around, watch TV, play a video game, read a book, whatever. So on Wednesday night when you get in your car, is it one of those things to where you sit down and everything's done and it's like, <sighs> do you ever, is that how you feel? Or is it like, yeah. I just got to get home? Or so, Sometimes, uh, yeah, because I, I take out the trash or whatever. So a lot of times... Um, you know, I'll be leaving and I'll just sit in the car for like five minutes and just, uh, <laughs> all right, let's go home. You know, yeah. have you ever fallen asleep in your car? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. In the driver's seat. Yes. I, yeah. There's been, sometimes I've pulled in my driveway and I'm like, how did I get here? No, I'm kidding. 
I, I never had that happen to me. But no, there's been times where, I, where Jessica and I will be traveling. Like, uh, for instance, we would, when we lived in San Antonio and we had our kids, before we had kids, we can drive anytime we want to. But when we have kids, we learned the best time to drive is when they're on their normal sleep cycle. Uh-huh. So we would start driving dinner time. Okay. Eat dinner before we left or go somewhere and, uh, or leave a little early and then eat dinner on the way. And then we would just have them fall asleep when they would normally fall asleep in their beds in their car seats. Wow. And so we're driving till 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Oh, in the morning. See. So that and messes you guys that up. That messes us up. But when we get there, there's grandparents to take care of the kids so we can sleep. But yeah, it, it was a nightmare mm-hmm. at times when, and she, we, we had this code. We said, look, no matter if the other person, needs it or not, if we get to the place where we feel like we are not safely able to drive, you pull over and you switch. Yeah. You have to because, yeah. There's- I can't do that anymore. For me to drive on a trip, it's getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning, getting on the road, and then Cracker driving Burrow. through the day. Yeah, driving through the day. I, I can't drive at night anymore. Yeah, we we're kind of different for me. You guys are, you have the little kids still in the house. Mine is older and now they can help drive. And so it's a lot nicer yeah. now. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I remember last December we went to um, – I took a couple students up to the called conference, mm-hmm. and I had ISOM the very next morning. <laughs> and so I slept out. I slept in the driver's seat. I still can't believe you did that. Well, yeah. It, it got chilly too. It was December, it beginning of December. So I'd start the car, <laughs> blast the heat, and I'd wake up in like a sweat. And so I'd turn it off, and then I'd freeze in the next 20 oh, minutes. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. But I used to do that in between shifts. I was working like unhealthy shifts uh, at my job up north. And so I'd, I'd sleep for a couple hours and then clock back in, worked another 12 hour. Wow. And it was, yeah. Welcome to the ministry, Cody Tedford. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why when I laugh, well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but when you're like, you know, hey, I appreciate, I said, dude, I used to like sleep in my car. Like this is, <laughs> yeah. this is awesome. I love doing this work. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we love naps. We love naps. And something else we love is we love movies. Mm. And that's what the episode's about today. And uh, matter of fact, um, usually it's not easy for me to fall asleep during a movie because mm. what, uh, for those of you that have never heard me talk about this, I have a very immersive personality. And so when I watch a movie or a TV show or play a video game or read a book or anything like that, I literally do my best. My, I've always had a really vivid crazy imagination. And so what I try to do is I try to literally connect myself almost like the matrix Mm. where this is now going to become reality to me. Okay, And so, because then I feel like I can get the most out of it. Like these characters are real. These aren't actors playing characters. These are real people, real characters. This video game is real. This book I'm reading is real because then you can feel the emotion of it. You can feel the, the danger. You can feel the suspense. You can feel, you know, the edge of your seat thing. If I, I've never understood you know, the mentality of going to see something to simply be entertained and not treat it as if this could be a reality. I've, I've witnessed, never understood that. We've witnessed you at a movie. Yes, theater. you have witnessed me. You are that. immersed into it. And I remember, what was it we were watching that one time? <laughs> James Bond? Yes, it was. And you're like, oh, that hurt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or, or something to that nature. You were really into it. We were like, wow, he, he's right. He's like focused. I, I have to watch it that way. But to, me, good. to me, that's what, to me, and here, and this is the other way I think of it is, as an artist, if I'm writing a song, the intention is to get out what's in me, but also it's to create something that you also can connect with. Yeah. To create the, the whole point is what I'm feeling right now in writing this is I want you to, feel, when you're singing it back to me or when you're singing it for yourself, I want you to feel the same connection to God that, that I felt when I was writing this. There's no way you can because I wrote it from a real place, mm-hmm. but there's a, there's a way you can take it and make it real for you and and use it whatever God wants. And I feel like when people write a book, it's the same thing. This is what I'm feeling, what I'm going through. When you read it, I hope you feel this too. I hope you're inspired by this. And I feel like that unless there's just a, and again, this is all coming from my personal perspective. You guys disagree or want to add to it, please in a minute do that. <laughs> but I, I've just never, I've always felt that when, when artists, directors, producers, actors, whatever, when they dedicate so much of themselves to a craft and so much of themselves to, to an art form, while they're at, while they while they are getting paid and it is a paycheck for them, it's it's it, they're putting them themselves into it. They're they're yeah. doing it from a very serious place, and so I feel it's almost disrespectful sure. to watch something or listen to something or play a game or doing something flippantly, as in this doesn't matter 
or you know, or or this isn't, and that's and that's why also I'm very particular about what I watch and what I listen to because I don't because they're putting themselves into that, and so if there's a darkness or a real, you know, place that I don't want to go into me, then I'm gonna screen it off and I'm not gonna let it happen. It, it is great to see the passion come out of David when he's talking about these things, isn't it, Cody? <laughs> it's fun. You're making fun of me right now. I'm not you? making fun of you. I'm not. I love to see the passion. This is this means a lot to you, and I've you know I see that. It's you've really seen cool. what I you've seen how I do what I do. Oh I, yeah. That, that's that's why I treat it this way no. because you're putting yourself into it. What, what we talk about? Whatever you do, do it do as it, unto the uh, Lord. To the Lord. And so it is to be the so best watch you can your movies as unto. The, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you, you laugh. Why not? You think okay. he's yeah. he's sitting there watching the movie with you? What are you making him watch? Bond. James mm -hmm. Bond. <laughs> Go ahead, Cody. I don't really know what to say to that. <laughs> I remember we watched, uh, you know, just kind of joking around about movies. And I think we're, I guess we're kind of picking on David right now. Go ahead. I can take we it. Were, we were watching Black Widow. <laughs> that was yeah. another one, yeah. Yep. And uh, she had just fallen off a bridge. She had she was in a fight and fell off, into a, off a bridge into the river. And, uh, you know, nothing. We were all just kind of sitting there. And about five minutes later in another scene, she takes this porcelain plate across the face and it shatters and goes, oh, that's <laughs> got to hurt. Yep. And I, I remember thinking to myself, David, she just fell like 100 feet. <laughs> yeah. At that point, my jaw is dropping. I'm like, there ain't no way she's walking away from this. <laughs> but no. she did. It was Spoiler good. alert, Black Widow lives. Uh, <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. The Widow. Yeah, but so what we decided to do for this episode is put together our top five favorite movies of all time. So let fun. this episode commence now. Nice. Take one. Yeah, take one. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we, we wanted to put together, again, we're not putting together our what we think are the top five best movies of all time because that is so subjective and there's no way we can leave this room alive if we get into that discussion. <laughs> well, mine works both ways. Oh, My top five are the... All time top. So five. You, your your top five are legitimately the best five movies of all time. No, probably that's what you're not. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. So we we put together our personal top five favorite list. So we're gonna go from five to one. All of us do our five. All of us do our four. So forth and so on. And then at the end, uh, we'll put some honorable mentions in there. And we have promised to do our best to if somebody names one that's also on our list to not spoil it and and try to put stone face on, no matter how emotional we may feel about that movie. But let me ask you guys this question. When putting together this list, I did it last night. Um, what were the criteria? Like, what are some things that you uh, you either pull from or or think of in your mental processing of uh, this is what I'm going to use to narrow down the hundreds or maybe even thousands of movies I've seen. This is what I'm going to use to narrow that down into five that I truly feel are my favorites. Cody, why don't you start? How'd you do this? Yeah, so this might contradict possibly what you guys' method was. Um, I tried not to go off my gut reaction, like, because I, I tend to be a prisoner of the moment. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I might've seen a really good movie last week that, oh my gosh, this is like a top five all timer. And then six months later, you know, you take more of an honest look at it and you're like, eh, okay, it was a decent movie, but maybe I was just a little too caught up in it. And so I, I just kind of thought I wasn't trying to go for gut reaction and, um, but as far as, you know, what it meant to me and why it was one of my, why it, uh, what made it one of my favorites was just the different ways that it would resonate with me, whether it related to my faith, whether it related to just, you know, manhood mm -hmm. and, and looking out for your family. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we all have different tastes, but that, the things that really, you know, just kind of made me feel good or made me stick my chest out a little bit, uh, you know us guys. So mm -hmm. that, that was my One method. little hair grows as you watch. Boing! <laughs> yeah, that's what Braveheart did to me. No, no I'm just kidding. Oh, chest oh, hair. No. Now we know one of his. Uh, no. Oh, no. there it is. No, I will, I'll go ahead and tell you, Braveheart's not in my top five or in my honorable mentions. Wow. But, so it's not there. I, I will say that. I to do honorable mentions. Well, you can, they'll come on to you pretty quickly. For me, I did similar to what you did. What I do is I don't go to the internet or to research immediately. I sit there for a second. I go, okay, from my own mental brain, what comes to me that has had an impact on my life? So what movies come to me that, yeah, I can almost quote every word in that. I remember the first time I saw it. I remember, you know, the impact it had on me at that time in my life, and it has stuck with me. And if I see it come on TV 
or if I see somebody else watching it, I can't help but stop for a second. Hmm. There's a, there's just something about it that I don't care if I if it's on TV every single week or if I've seen it a million times. There's still something like like the Bible. There's something I'm going to get out of it fresh that like I've never seen it before. And so I do that first, and then I got to I got like to ten twelve. And then I went into the internet and I looked at top movies of the 90s, top movies of the 80s, and top movies of the 2000s, because that's usually where my my brain goes back to. There are some recent ones that are probably at the end of time going to maybe get on my list, but I, I tried to then narrow it down, okay, going from, from this list of 15 or so, what are the five that I can honestly say are going to be, hands down, I would call my favorite and have really made an impact on me? as a not only a, mu- a movie watcher, but made an impact on me in terms of the kind of art I love to do now and mm-hmm. the kind of music I love, the kind of stories I love and and the kind of acting I love and all of all of that kind of stuff. It really it really came from that place. And so that that's kind of that's kind of how I did it. Pastor, what about you? Well it's kind of the same with you guys. It has to speak to me. I didn't even look at anything. This is just my list. So you did it kind of like what I did. You yeah. just you just went deep. I went deep. What spoke to me, what kept me entertained. But then thirdly, my criteria is, would I buy it and put it on my uh, mm. my iTunes account? Or would I buy it as a DVD, which we don't do that anymore, but would I buy it and just have it so I can watch it again? So that's kind of how I went. That's it. an interesting way to look at it. Like if it's, you know, it could be a good movie, but is it good enough to crack that echelon of, okay, I'm going to own I'm this. I'm going to own this movie. Device, yes. Or, yes. So, that's a great so the way five to, that I'm going to have is the ones that I own, and I'll watch it over and over. Interesting. Yeah, that definitely, I, I, coming to think of it, I think all five of my list I have owned at one time in my life. Uh-huh. I do think that that is the case. I do have I do have some DVDs still at home, not many, but I do have some, and I think I own probably every single one of these. Well, and those so. for the 80s, you know, the 80s kids, I have Blockbuster right here on my phone. <laughs> Yeah, be kind and rewind. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to go to a, a video store. You just yeah. buy it, and there you go. Watch it wherever you're at. My whole childhood, I would destroy my fingers trying to rewind that. And oh, then my I realized goodness. You don't have to do that. You can use a pencil. Oh, you mean the cassette tapes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, cassette tapes. I say VHS, tapes, yeah. the pencil wouldn't fit no, in there. Yeah, that's, yeah. We that's had right. eight tracks thinking, in my day. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, eight tracks. Okay, all you right. Had silent so, films I, in your day. I'm old enough to remember when the CD came out. Yeah, I, 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 I remember that. <laughs> and now the, the, there's there's 20 and unders going. What's a CD? <laughs> <laughs> Are the Walkman with the cassette tape, and you had to turn oh, it yeah. over? You know, if you're listening to a oh, lecture yeah. or a book, please turn over to side B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100. Yeah. percent So, without further ado. That's a good enough uh, preliminary talk on how we got here. So let's get into these lists. And so, and once again, these are not our top five best. This is our top five favorite. So, age before beauty, Pastor. Oh, I want so I you to, to start and kick this off. I get what, to start this whole what, thing out. What was your number five? Okay, my number five is one I really enjoyed, and I was introduced introduced to Dwayne Johnson for the very first time. <laughs> the Rock. It was if the, you smell. Yes. It was what? the rundown. The rundown. rundown. The rundown. I own the rundown. Do I do too? Yes. <laughs> but uh, I just loved it because I don't know. It was just the manliness. I mean, his job was he had. He's a collector, and so he was working for a boss that if anybody owed this boss money, kind of like a mobster boss. He's a bounty hunter. A bounty hunter. You would yeah. have to go collect the item for whatever it was. And in the movie, in the story, every time the Dwayne Johnson's character tried to get out of the situation, he was always pulled back in. And finally, he had to do this one last assignment, which was go find the boss's son in Amazon, in the Amazon jungle. Hmm. And uh, it, it's just a great story. And then it turns out to where The Rock's character and this young man who he saves, they ended up going against Christopher Walken, the 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 antagonist in the movie, yep. and he ends up saving a whole village yep. from slavery, and it's just it's just one of those things. Half the stuff that happened in it probably could not happen; it would probably have killed the Rock. But the oh, Rock yeah. is the Rock. Oh but yeah, it was awesome. This one man Rambo just walking through. It's and, one of the Rock's first movies. It's yes. like his number, his second or third movie I was he ever made. Asked when would, when did it come out? Two thousand two or three? Uh, I think two thousand two. Yeah. So probably right after Scorpion King. That's, like I said, it's probably a, the Scorpion King first, and then I think I think either the Rundown or that movie where he plays the weird dude with the afro to co- be cool or something oh, like that. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around there. And then after that was Walking Tall. It was all within the same two year the and best, a half. The best yeah. line 
every time he would go and meet the person that, that he's going to collect the item from or yep. collect whatever, he say, you have two options. Option A or option B. <laughs> option A or option B. Option A is you give it to me and follow the procedures of what we're going to do. Or option B, I make you give it to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And there was this one scene, I'm not going to give it away, so if you want to watch it, but he goes in and it's like the championship football team that he has to take a ring from because yep. he owes money and it's just awesome. Yeah. I need the ring as collateral. I need the ring as collateral. What are yep. you talking? Yeah. Option A or option B. Exactly. And he goes and he goes, I don't really want to hurt these guys because they're getting ready to go to the championship game, Super Bowl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so awesome. I don't even, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Go uh, watch it. It's good. I go love it. Go watch it. Type huh. in, type in the rundown, how to watch online or how to watch wherever and go find it. it is well, there, there is language. It's PG-13, a little bit, but yeah. it's pretty clean for the most part as far as, yep. you know, what yep. most movies <laughs> they have in today, but yeah, no yeah. kidding. really Absolutely. enjoyed it. No, it's great. Cody, you're number five, sir. My number five, The Green Mile. The Green Mile. Wow. Yeah. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan, a um, couple other guys that I'm familiar with, but I can't think of the names off the top of my head. Uh, just a good, I mean, it, it was one of the first movies that, you know, because it's older. It came out in 99, I believe I yeah, saw. Yeah, somewhere around there. So when I saw it for the first time, I was probably like 10, 12, and uh it was really one of the first serious movies that gets you thinking about like deep things, mm-hmm. uh, at least for me. And uh, you know, it's don't, the classic: don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> right? right? Um, you can be big and strong, but you can be gentle and kind and caring and compassionate at the same time. Um, you know, the the time frame that that movie takes place. Of course, Michael Clark Duncan. Uh, he's passed now, unfortunately, but he's a this large black man, mm-hmm. and this took place you know, well in the past. Right. And, and I mean, I don't think there's a spoiler alert. This thing's over 20 years old, but, right. you know, he was framed and he was, it was just assumed that he had committed this crime because he looked a certain way. Right. And, um, you know, and then to see this big, just monster of a man be so kind and caring. And uh, it just, it was sort of that, like I said, that first movie that really got me thinking on a deeper level. Did he have the gift of healing? Was that kind of what the movie? I can't remember. that. When it comes to that movie, that's one of the one areas that I'm always scratching my head about. Is this movie supposed to drift into sci-fi, or is this guy <laughs> really got a... Got a got a gift that's spiritual and 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 because he's a pra- he's a praying man right. he's a godly man so is this this weird gift he has what was your take on it watching it what do you feel about I've always it? thought that it was it was it's sort of an underrated plot twist because mm-hmm. up and that it's a long way into the movie before you find out he has this healing power right right and so uh, all throughout that you know beginning part of the movie you're thinking oh this is this is just a, a movie about a prison death row. Dead man walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From years and years ago. But then you realize, oh, this isn't just a, a flashback kind of movie. Like, this is sci-fi. This has spiritual powers. And yeah. um, I don't know. I, I, I've always thought it's an underrated plot twist. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely didn't see it coming when the first time I saw it. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. What kind of movie is this again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. if I remember right, don't he, as he he breathes in whatever the disease is he, or like, whatever. Like, like he breathes the evil out of a person. He breathes the evil. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then it, yeah. Oh man, I'm trying to think. He he releases it. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And so he he takes it on and Right. Um yeah. The Green Mile. The yeah. Green Mile. It's a good movie. Very one of Tom Hanks' underrated ones. People don't when you think Tom Hanks, that's one of the last movies you think of, but mm-hmm. it's a good one. Yeah. You seemed really surprised when I said that. Was it just because it was a little older? No, or? Not, not not even that. It's just of all the I guess like I said, of all the Tom Hanks movies. That's not even in my top ten. So when I so right. I don't know how much you love Tom. So I well, thought, Tom's probably one of the greatest actors of our time. Tom Brady. <laughs> no, he has the greatest quarterback of all time in the NFL. Oh, uh, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Um, my number five is uh, I, specifying. I told these guys you can put a whole trilogy in a spot or a whole saga in a spot. Just make sure you name what your favorite one is of it. So at number five, without question, made my top list. Had to is the Dark Knight trilogy, with the Dark Knight being the one. The Dark Knight, Batman. I'm Batman. Cody and I have had several conversations. In my opinion, Christian Bale is the best to ever put the cowl on. I I, agree. There was so many moments in watching the the Batman Dark Knight trilogy that that I literally said, they need to stop. There's nobody that can ever do justice like this again. Mm-hmm. It is it is so well done. See the, what he did there? The, the, justice. The, the, 
league. Yeah. Hey, everything I do has a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> just about. I'm just kidding. No, but but just watching, especially The Dark Knight, in my opinion, a movie that literally from the first click of the first scene to the last click of the last scene, if you dart your eyes away, you've missed something. Mm-hmm. It is loaded. It is, it is so, it is full of so much memorable dialogue, p- twists and turns, things you do not see coming, moments where you think you know someone and then they turn in the middle of the movie. And, and, and it, there's just so many moments of ethical things. There's moments of, of uh, personality things, and and I mean, of course, good grief, the greatest to ever do the Joker. Rest in peace, Heath Ledger. <laughs> my goodness, I, the, my wife was messed up after that. We we got in the car and we went home, and she said, "I I know I see now why he why he it killed him. Why why yeah the move the the role literally killed him. It, li- it so literally serious. It literally <laughs> it's it's uh, I mean yeah it, everything. There's so many one liners, and the, of course the most iconic line is when Batman's trying to get inside Joker's head and find out why is he doing what he's doing. And Alfred said, some men just want to watch the world burn. I actually own Batman Begins. That's one of my favorite ones. It's not on my list, but my favorite part was when they were. Uh, the, the police was there and they were going through the drug deal and all of a sudden Batman shows up for the first time and where are you? And he's hanging upside down. Here. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> so cool, man. Yeah. Put another hair on my chest. <laughs> yeah. Def, def, definitely a great, a great moment. And like nice. I said, just, just all the, all, all the, all the character development because it does get you to number three, but if, if they had released it by itself, it, it would have been a standalone movie. I now, think. It was isn't so there well word done. out right now that he could possibly come back and do a fourth one? I thought I was reading about I, that. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I mean, at the end of number three, spoiler alert, at the end of number three, it looks like he's content and has, and has done everything he knows to do. And mm-hmm. they've left enough breadcrumbs for, for, um, Robin for Robin exactly or for Nightwing or whatever. So, I mean, it's possible, but I mean, I, I think that I think that was the whole thing of we're going to leave this open ended where if we ever want to, we can. Nice. But if not, y'all can fill in the blanks of what happened next, awesome. kind of thing. So cool. Yeah. So that's what I felt about it. Pastor, All number, right, number, number four. Number four. So it's my turn again. Have you guys seen the movie Fly Boys? <laughs> I have heard of it. I've never seen it. James Franco is the lead actor. And what it is, it's a true story about the very first World War I pilots who started flying airplanes. And so these guys ended up going to France to help the French fight off the Germans. And uh, it was the true story of how, really, the Air Force started in the United States. So wow. really, really, it's a really good movie. Um, a lot of, you know, you see men stepping out to do what they've never done before to fight the enemy that's terrorizing that area. And so you just see the heart and these guys form a team. They work hard together. There's lots of different moments where they take care of one another. So those movies kind of speak to me. So I kind of like, you're going to see some of mine or mine are like around war and teammates and men working together to do these, these feats of uh, just challenge, and I just man, that movie was really awesome. So that's my number four, guys. Fly Boys. Yeah, James Franco is very underrated. Yeah, he's a great actor. A lot of stuff he does. I mean, when I I grew up watching the uh, the Spider Man movies from like O two, and so he was the Green Goblin and and uh, Harry. Harry Osborn. You've made me want to watch it. I've seen. I know. I, the moment you said it, and you said James Franco, I see the cover in my in my face now, in my yeah. head now. So it's I know re- it's a really good story, and I like really good stories when they're put together and you can follow along and. It pulls you in because, could I see myself doing that? Mm. I don't know if I would do that, but yeah, it's just like, wow, right. come on. Boing. Another another hair. <laughs> I, be, I begin to think all the pastor's chest hairs came from movies. What do you think? I don't have any. <laughs> Cody, what's your number four? My number four, why so serious? Dark Knight. Wow. wow. They've overlapped. Yeah. On the same list. On the same good. list. Now, are you putting the whole trilogy or specifically just the Dark Knight? Um, because I put the whole trilogy. I love I love the trilogy, but I think the second one I I re- I think the third one is underrated. It is very underrated. But I think the second one is just so much better. I agree. Again, nothing against one or three, but the second one, like you said, if it was a standalone, it would have been just fine, just as just as you know well. Um, I I know I, I believe the first Iron Man. Uh, came out just a couple months before The Dark Knight. But for me, 
And I, you know, without having researched it, The Dark Knight was a much greater success yes. in 2008 than Iron Man. Now, yes. of course, what Iron Man yeah. grew to as far as the MCU, but I, th I would argue The Dark Knight was what really ignited this superhero craze. Agreed. Hmm. Iron Man is, is, you know, related to MCU, but I think the success of The Dark Knight really made it cool to be a superhero nerd again. Right. I mean, if you want to go technical, I think I think Batman Begins lit the spark, but then Dark Knight was like, let's throw gasoline on this thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, but like yeah. I said, yeah. Batman Begins was awesome, but it when Dark Knight came out, that was the first movie. Um, we were joking earlier about Blockbuster. That was the first movie that you know when you would rent a movie for like two or three days. I watched it probably three or four times in a two or three day span. Oh yeah, because it was like like you said, David. From the opening scene where there's there's no dialogue, no, it's just a Hans Zimmer awesome sound. It was Hans Zimmer, yeah, right? I think so. Awesome soundtrack, um, and it just sh it shows the guys dressed up as the clowns and they're robbing this huge bank and no one's saying a word. And you're like, from from the first minute, you're like, what is going on? The school yeah. bus busts through. Oh man! <laughs> and all of them are wearing clowns, and none of them know who the Joker is. Right? And yet they're all wearing his mask. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it. I th I think just, you know, my opinion is I think it really helped spark the superhero wave. And then for me personally, it was like, mm. you know what? It is kind of cool to be a superhero nerd and just to yeah. to cheer for Batman, even though I'm not <laughs> a kid anymore. And um, Dark Knight number four. Was that the first time that? an actual superhero was a realistic story. I mean, was that, I mean, you had the Batman back in the old days where it was Batman and Robin. I can't think of his name. So you, you, had, you had, you had Adam Wiss and Burt Ward, which was a comedy group. Yeah. Then you had Michael Keaton who played was Batman more of a, and Jack Nicholson who played the Joker. What's the word I'm looking for? That was more like, it wasn't as realistic as this Batman was. Yeah. So I am guess what I'm asking, was this the first realistic superhero movie to come on the this, scene? This one felt authentic and gritty. It yeah. did. Yeah. I think I would put this one, yeah, number one as far as that. Probably not too far behind it was the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man yeah. oh, okay. trilogy. Yeah. Um, that that was a little bit more super powery, of course, where mm -hmm. Batman is just his gadgets and money and his yeah. villains right. are just strong so more, more or realistic per se. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would say, yeah, mm -hmm. the dark Knight trilogy, the, the, the first Spider-Man trilogy, you can sit back and go, okay, maybe. Mm. So maybe, maybe you guys yeah. are right. Maybe it launched this whole idea of superhero Marvel and all right. that. So interesting. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Iron Man is possible. Mm -hmm. I don't think black, mm -hmm. I don't think Thor is real. I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying, but at least you could picture Batman. Who so are you? if somebody, I'm Batman, okay. So somebody, just becomes very talented at, at martial arts. Somebody owns a lot of money, and somebody has a has a vendetta against injustice because of what happened to him as a kid. Mm -hmm. That man could be a legit person. Wow! Yeah. So I don't. Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Christian. <Bell. laughs> yeah, but I mean, I don't, what I'm saying is, of all the characters in the comic book universe, Batman is a very legitimate character. Awesome. I think I think that Batman could exist if if that per Superman can't exist, Batman could. That's my opinion. Yeah, but, good point. So. Superman can't exist. I'm sorry, Cody. Well, I'm sitting right here between you guys, so the, I kind of take it personally. The, the, Bible <laughs> the, the Bible never mentions Krypton, my friend. It just doesn't mention Krypton. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's okay, Cody. Uh, past, uh, oh, oh your turn. To me. Yep. Oh, my number, number four. My number four. Okay. My number four. I was a lot bigger than I am now. Growing up, I was a huge history buff, mm -hmm. specifically American history. Rambo. Ooh. And I, I loved, I love history and I had an infatuation with a certain period in American history that I spent hours and hours reading books about, hmm. watching movies about. My father and I would travel to locations in the country where these things would take place. Wow. One of our, some of our father's son trips were to the locations of, of, of lore of this time of history it's the Civil War. Civil War. I was going to ask. And my favorite battle that I've done multiple papers, projects, and research on, all of that love for this battle stemmed from a movie made about it. It was so big, they did it in two parts and put it on TNT. My favorite movie, number four, from the Civil War, Gettysburg. <laughs> That's pretty good. Gettysburg. 
was groundbreaking for its time. It was made in 1993, and like I said, they made it and they filmed it and they put it right on, t- on Turner Broadcasting. Gettysburg had some huge actors. They got Sam Elliott. They got Jeff Daniels. They got Sam Martin Elliott. Sheen. They got Tom Berenger. Wow. They got um, uh, Stephen Lang, who, if you don't know who Stephen Lang is, he's the cowardly guy in Tombstone. And he's also uh, the guy in uh, Avatar who's the general. Wow. That that at the very end it tries to kill everybody, so the, they got a, they got a top A list of people to play wow. these really big characters. Martin Sheen was Robert E. Lee. That dude just nailed that role <laughs> so well. Tom Berenger, General James Longstreet, Jeff Daniels, Colonel Chamberlain, and um, j- just so many amazing actors came out to make this movie. And but what I love the most about it is the for the longest time in American history because the the victors write history. For the longest time in American history, because the North won, we grew up thinking the South was evil and yeah. should never have rebelled. And why why would you dare rebel and try to tarnish what is good and tarnish what is right? What I love about Gettysburg is it took a moment to say, well, no, wait a second, let's go into the southern campgrounds. Let's mm-hmm. go into the let's go around the campfire and let them talk about why they feel they have to fight. Wow. Let's talk about the, that they left their homes and their families behind as well. Let's let's have Robert E. Lee sit on a horse and say, you know. I couldn't fight against my family. I couldn't fight against Virginia. You know, let, let, let James Longstreet, you know, sitting next to Robert E. Lee and say, I used to command some of those boys. We swore an oath we'd never fight. And here I am across the battle lines from them. It's just such a powerful movie of real men that felt like they had no other choice but to do what they did for the sake of their homes, and 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 then and all through the all through the three days of Gettysburg, it was the bloodiest battle ever fought on U.S. soil. Fifty three thousand men died at this three day battle, wow. and by the end of it, when you see, I, I cannot tell you, I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. <laughs> and the, at the, at he the, really is, folks. I'm, <laughs> at, at, I'm not kidding. At, at the end of part two, uh, the second move, the second half of the movie, when they commence that command. And 15,000 men come out of the trees and walk across a mile of open field to their certain death. I'm in tears. Wow. Because, number one, I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. Why are you risking men's life to do this? You could have done this battle in any other way. Why are you charging across an open field in the midst of cannon fire and gunfire, mm-hmm. trying to take this small piece of land that you think is going to win the battle? So I'm right there, I'm like, all these men that are about to die. But then number two, these men knew what they were dying for. Yeah. And these men were willing to walk across this field at the command of their officers because they knew oh. that if we don't have this courage and we don't fight, then then everything we've said we, we're here to protect is lost. Wow. It, it's just a powerful, powerful story. It, it's the same thing Braveheart gives you. It's the same mm-hmm. thing the Patriot gives you. It's when men are willing to step up and be men. And we will fight for what we believe in, whether we're on the North or on the South. Yeah. But even though we disagree about these things, we're willing to defend our home and defend our families. We love Did the country. movie Gods and Generals come from Gettysburg? Yes. Same actors. Same actors. It's a lot of the same actors. But is it like the next story to that? Or it's is before it? that. Oh, it's before it's that. A pre- it's a prequel to Gettysburg. Wow, I really yes. enjoyed that one. Yeah. I have to go back and watch Gettysburg. I own Gettysburg. I'll let you borrow it. Okay. See, I I, I spent my, I, I've seen it at least 10 times, if not more. Wow. And, I, and I own it. It is a powerful. Is that like a four hour movie? Uh, I think four and a half to five, two, two and a half hours each part. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, but it's worth it. Awesome. It's so good. The, di- the dialogue is very simple because it was made to be very easily understood. Nice. But there's, there's references and there's parts of it that you're like, okay, for that time frame, I know why they're talking about this. But again, like I said, what I love about it is by the end of the movie, you love the North and you love the South, and your heart breaks that they have to fight each other. Yeah. That's what I love. Mm. About it. It's powerful. It's a great movie. Awesome. Wow. So, Maybe after Pastor borrows yeah, after it. you borrow it, you can pass it on to him. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Now, do you know what a DVD player is, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but it's in my PlayStation 3. <laughs> I, have, I have a PlayStation 4, and I, we do the same thing. <laughs> All right, Pastor, come, uh, come back to you. Number you, three, huh? You're, you're number three. Okay, this was really tough for me because I could almost take my two and three and re- reverse those, mm-hmm. but my number three at this present moment for me is Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> So the one that just came out? The one that just came out. Okay. I own it. <laughs> okay, okay. But are you sure you're not having a knee-jerk reaction to the how awesome it is right now? It could be that, but I okay. love the story. I felt like, you know, with everything we've been going through in our time, just with the wokeness and you got to be careful, there was none of that. This was a Ameri- – we are American. 
we are strong, we are powerful, this is how we do things. And I think that's what really spoke to me. But the other side of it is, I love the whole idea of coming to this room, here's the mission, here's how we're going to have to do it. And then Tom Cruise plays the part where he has to train these soldiers, these young pilots, to do the mission. It really pulled me in. I I own it, but I think I've seen it like seven times already. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I okay. <laughs> Pastor, let's go there. Is it better than the original? I say yes. I say yes, too. Yes. Wow. And, 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 the, and the funny thing about it is the original, it's amazing growing up, the things we let our, our parents let us watch. Yes. You know, there's some risque scenes in that first one. Not which, this one. But not this one. No. It was so clean. And it, it was one I could take my kids to and we don't have to worry about, is there something bad going to be in this? It's just the story of America. We're, we're the nation's greatest fire, fighter pilots. Can't stand in our way. We are we are the power force you know, of the world. Yeah. That, that's what I just loved about it. I loved it. I know you've seen it too, right? I have not. <gasps> okay. When you're done watching it, yeah. <laughs> Veronica and I were going you to. You just lost the chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> edit that. The, the, no, no edit it. This is how we, you know, how some uh, podcasts, they have their way of giving points out and stuff like that. I'll give that one four chest hairs. <laughs> this is four chest hairs. <laughs> oh man. We were going to go see it for our anniversary in August. Um, our, our dinner, the restaurant we were at was understaffed. So our dinner took too long. So we, we had to settle for, um, Thor, Love and Thunder. Oh, Lord. Which, I feel so sorry for you. Let me just say it was not worth. <laughs> Happy anniversary, babe. Yeah. <laughs> it is, that, that is, unfortunately, the first Marvel movie that I've read reviews, and everybody who's who has said, if you if you value any of the Marvel movies before, do not watch this movie. That, <laughs> yeah. There it is. I, I'm... That 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 saddens me that they've <laughs> dropped the ball that bad. Is it just for the simple sake of they had to tie up the loose ends with the previous characters? They had to write them off. Well, finally? it's just you got to add all this other junk in here too. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So, but absolutely, Cody, number three. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies <laughs> of the north, general of the Felix legions, and loyal servant to the true yeah. emperor Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Yep. You are quoting what movie right now? Gladiator. Gladiator. Are you not entertained? <laughs> are you not entertained? Hopefully of this podcast you are. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had to I know I had to quote that. That got long, but just you talk about <laughs> Put it down. I don't want to get flagged. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get flagged. <laughs> oh, good point. We yeah, do we're not, not own the rights to any music. own the rights to the soundtrack. I'm from sorry. Gladiator. I messed up. <laughs> oh, man. If that's the song I think it was, that's a fake language. Strength and honor. Yeah. 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 When, uh, when, when they created that soundtrack, um, the actual language, like the Rom- um, Latin. Latin, it didn't sound right. That's literally gibberish. Wow. Yeah. But it sounds like an ancient. Anyway. Yeah. It is my number three because probably more than any other movie, it strikes that just you're a man. Yeah. You're a husband. You're a dad. He lost his family, and he went – he didn't just go – it's not like he went, like, crazy, right? He didn't go yeah. whatever. I'm Batman. <laughs> but he set out, despite the, the trials, despite the, 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 the hardships, despite the danger – he was going to avenge his family. Yes, and oh my goodness! And just as you as you watch it, um, I'm a big soundtrack guy. The soundtrack's amazing. Epic. Russell, yeah, yeah. Russell Crowe's phenomenal. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, I believe mm. that was really what put him on the map. Yep. Uh, this is 2000. It was when it came out. Correct. Um, my gosh, it was. <laughs> and at, at the end, when um, Joaquin Phoenix's character, when he when he when he's insulting him. And he, and he talks about how, you know, I'm not going to go into detail because it's a little graphic, but talks about how when his boy was killed, he whined and, yeah. and just, other, and it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> and it kind of reminds me it's of, on. yeah, it reminds me of David and Goliath mm-hmm. when, when David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? How dare you? Like who yeah. in the world do you think? And mm. he went, he went ham. And of course, you know, 22 years, it's not a spoiler alert. You know, he's. He's killed by a cheap shot. 
but he didn't go down easy. He didn't no. go down easy. No, no, he got his <laughs> Heroes revenge. Heroes never do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and and what is the um, what is the line that the uh, the African guy? Um, I know what you're talking as about. He's, as he's laying him to rest, he said, "We will. I will see you again, but not yet." Not yet. Right. Well, right. And it's, of course, this was this was Rome. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we don't believe in Roman gods or anything like that, but just the, you know. Um, it does give you a good picture of what Rome was like, how yes. evil the, some of those guys were and the strategies and the conspiracies behind mm-hmm. the scenes of getting this Caesar out of place. And, right. And But the senators, um, you know, they, there was a struggle to re- maintain that integrity. Yeah. Right, and when right. and when Joaquin, when his when his character finally dies, you know it it was that sacrifice by uh, Russell Crowe that you know it allowed it allowed the the righteous guys to take take hold of of their government again and right. just so many different well, levels. It just like oh, let's that go. movie is such an impactful movie that in the last church where I was at our uh, men's ministry there was a ministry called Fight Club. And that was our quote when we would see each other. We would say things such as, hey, have a great day, strength and honor. <laughs> strength, and honor. <laughs> strength and honor. Strength and honor. That would always be the quote. And what's the first rule of the fight club? Don't talk about Don't it. Don't talk about the fight club. Strength and honor. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Gladiator, I mean... If you're watching it for historical accuracy, don't. But if you're watching it for a what if, and man, this is a cool story, and man, like you said, by the end of it, that's a man, and and that's what men should be like. Yeah. Yeah, 100% agree. My number three, kind of going a little bit into that into that realm, this is honestly the first movie I can honestly remember watching. And I'm not – and I don't – not a cartoon movie. Cartoon movies are not in this category, although I, there mm-hmm. are some really big cartoon movies that I'm really fond of. But this is the first live-action movie I can remember watching as a young boy that mesmerized me, sucked me in, and made me fall in love with the character and made me want and gave me that... Avatar. No. No. <laughs> and gave me that... Why do you do that? <laughs> Why do you do that? You're so serious. You're so passionate. I got to break. You didn't read a monologue from a movie. (laughs) Avatar. You didn't interrupt him. I'm sorry, David. I'll be quiet. (laughs) No, you won't, but it's okay. It's your church. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, But it just, it was, it it got that same thing of, of that, that thirst for adventure, that thirst for, Man, how awesome it is. And what I love, what it really stuck to me in, because again, growing up as the as the kid in the home I grew up in and the in the in the church I grew up in, if it had biblical elements to it, mm. it drew me in even more. Wow. And this one does. My favorite movie from when I was a kid that has stuck with me, and I still think it is one of the greatest movies of all time. A lot of people consider it a perfect movie. And I think it will be what Harrison Ford is forever remembered for. Oh. Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Wow. I played that in a high school concert, by the way. That Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, without question in my mind, Indiana Jones is the role Harrison Ford was born to play. Is that the trilogy or just the one? I'm put, I'm, you know, I, yeah, I'm putting, I'm putting the entire character and everything. Well, it wouldn't be a trilogy. In it, yeah. in it, well, the whole saga. The whole the saga. Whole saga. Yeah. yeah, I'm putting the entire saga in this place, but no question the first one is the best one. I mean, it, I don't even think it's an argument. I think anybody you talk to is going to say the Raiders of the Lost Ark is the best Indiana Jones movie of all time. Which is the first one. It's right? the very first one. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, there's, different th- there's different elements of each one that make it unique and special. Mm-hmm. But in terms of you, if you, someone said, I'm only going to watch one, which one should I watch? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders That's the Lost one you got to watch. The the a lot kind of like with, the, with what you said about Flyboys, how to fight against evil, and and how to how to how to when you and what I love about Harrison Ford and what I love about the character of Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones takes a beating in every movie he's in. No matter even even Harrison Ford in his late sixties with the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he gets beat up in that movie. They're making a fifth one next year wow. that's coming out. It's going to be the final one. Then he, and he's like 80 years old coming back for this role. When you say like Batman created maybe the superhero stream, do you think uh, Indiana Jones had a lot to do with the special stunts and the, the behind the scenes of making the movie, I guess maybe the stunts making them more dangerous. Cause I remember, isn't that one, the one where the propellers, 
and he's fighting yes. and in front of that. Yes. I think my other favorite scene was when that guy comes out and he's having the machine gun or what was it? The sword or something. And Harrison Ford just takes his gun. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> was that the? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. Harrison Ford was sick with the flu filming that. Really? I didn't know and, that. And the drawing of the gun was improvised. <laughs> You know, that, knowing <laughs> him and seeing his parts, I, I, that's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. He, originally, they were going to do a semblance of a fight scene, and then he was going to pull the gun. <laughs> and he said to Steven Spielberg, can I just shoot him? Because I don't feel good. <laughs> and so he just pulled out the gun and shot him. And it's, it, it is one of the, it's a, cl- oh. it's a, it's a hilarious movie, but it's, wow. but then the whole point of the movie is he's trying to find the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. He's looking for the lost Ark. <laughs> and so again, just, being a, a a person that grew up in a biblical household, I know what the Ark of the Covenant is. Yeah. I know the power of God, and and the, the whole movie he's doubting does God is God even real? He calls he calls it Sunday school. He calls it fairy tales, and but but at the same time he understands that the Hebrew people they had something that did mean something to them, whether it was magical or not or powerful or not. They had this thing. This thing does exist. So I want to go wow. find it because. If the Nazis get it, even if this thing is truly not magical, if the Nazis get a hold of this, there's a good chance it will rally Europe who believes in it wow. to just lay down their weapons because they can't fight God. But yeah, the fight scenes, the stunts, even to this day at uh, Hollywood Studios in Disney World, yeah. they have the Indiana Jones stunt show wow. to this day. Have you seen? And, the, and they still have that stunt show. I am I think it's a blooper because I, I know in the movie he doesn't get crushed, but there's... There's a clip, a video clip online of that that stunt show, and he's running, and the boulder actually catches up to him. That's Avatar. That <laughs> <laughs> I had to take it back over. <laughs> you threw oh, his pin, man. Oh, I think... <laughs> Listen, we're just having fun up here. Just having fun. Yeah. No, there's definitely there's 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 multiple bloopers from you know cut scenes of the bot the rock catches him and you know and he gets the, the dark gets him he's like oh <laughs> like yeah there's moments but no just just again like like I said the the action of the movie the fun of the movie and and it's again it inspired me seek out adventure you know have a purpose fight for something you know defend those who need to be defended you know against the, even if you're out even if you're one man versus a thousand don't give up don't give go, up. go after what you came for so well. Yeah, it's great. Pastor, number two. All right, number two. I'm going to hang on the Russell Crowe. This was tough for me because Top Gun Maverick, but Russell Crowe. Avatar. Yeah, Russell Crowe's Robin Hood. I know it didn't get good ratings. Okay. Now, I bought the uncut version, so it shows extra footage, and there's so much good footage in there where – Going back to Russell Crowe, just being that man, taking care of his family, he gets put on this journey where, you know, he didn't have to do it, but he's following along, going in to take care of a family and that kind of thing. And he just becomes the man. He stands up and says, we got to fight against tyranny. And uh, you see the story of Robin Hood un- unfold. It's just so powerful. Yeah. Robin Hood's always been one of my childhood favorite stories. Yeah. Ever since Errol Flynn in the 1930s, that Robin Hood, I still love the character. It, but Russell Crowe, like, Gladiator just did a great job just with that character. I just yeah. like it, how he acts. Just one of my my second favorite. He's movies. a great actor. So okay, again, you guys are a little older than me. I didn't know they had there was a Russell. Cr- I knew the Kevin Costner mm-hmm. Robin Hood, right? Prince, yeah, Prince of Thieves, right? It just didn't get such a good ratings with the viewers. But yeah. I love the story. When did when was it released? Two thousand nine or ten? I believe around so. There? Oh, so yeah. it's somewhat newer. It's, it's somewhat it's, newer. Yeah, it's newer. It's just such a hmm. – it, it shows how a man should treat a woman. It shows – it just – you know, there's one part where he takes care of – taking care of uh, the crops, right? And he goes in and Lady Marion is like, um, "What? who did this? And he goes, if I have to tell you, it wouldn't be a gift. And it, it just kind of makes you think yeah. of a, being a man. Oh, I washed the dishes for you, honey, so give me a – no, you do it because it has to be done. That's right. the whole thing that I loved about that movie. Yeah, I agree. It's it, it's it's underrated. It's one of I it, feel like it is. It's a very good movie. Yeah, Cody, number two, number two. I am not a musical guy at all. I don't I don't like musicals. Which to me that just speaks to how good I really think of how much how how positively I think of this movie, The Greatest Showman. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's this a good is the one. Greatest Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Again, I've never been a musical guy, 
and Veronica and I went and saw it when it was released in theaters. And I walked, and I was excited because the trailer seemed really entertaining, and the music was upbeat and modern. And I'm like, okay, I could, I could try that. I'll stomach this. Yeah. yeah. And as we left the theater, I I leaned over and I said, I think that's a top three movie all time for me. Mm. And that was, I think, five years later, and it's my number two um, as we do this show. So, just the the music, I, I, every song is catchy. Every song, it's like. You know, it, it's beyond just like, oh, that's a nice beat. It's like, it's fun. And yes. the choreography, I, I think of the Zac Efron and Zendaya song where they're, they're the... Um, rewrite the Stars, yeah. Rewrite the Stars. And they're swinging around yeah. the circus on the on the rope or yeah. whatever. And, um, and then the, the story of, you know, how he went from rags to riches. Yes. Uh, and a little bit of a redemption story there too, yeah. where he... Made himself a mess, and yeah, he yeah. had to had to clean himself up and ask for forgiveness, and right. um, you know, just uh, when that movie came out, Veronica and I, just the season of life we were in, you know, we were we got married really young, and so uh, we had our struggles financially or whatever, and so as corny as this may sound, a million dreams, <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they're on the rooftop, you identified with them, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, and we were wanting kids. I mean, it mm-hmm. it was got to, okay, I'm just going to admit here, I, I teared up in yeah. the theater watching it because it was like yeah. just the things you dream of, even when you, even when it doesn't seem possible. And when he comes home and he brings that little light toy and it, it just shines yeah. the, the, the yeah. shapes on the ceiling and it spins, <clears throat> it was such a simple thing, but his daughters found it so fun and amusing. Yeah. And, you know, and it made him happy. But deep down inside, he was like, oh, well, he just, wasn't afraid to take risk either. He right. wasn't afraid to take risks. And he, he just, he was glad it made them happy, but he wanted more for them. Right. Well, what was the part of that I really loved? How did you get this, uh, how did you get this money from the bank? Oh, it's collateral. What? I'm what? Uh, I own, I own a cruise line. Where, where's the cruise line? At the bottom of the, the China ocean. Sea. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Whatever the ships were that he purchased, it was right. so funny. Yeah. So it was, yeah, I love that movie. It's my favorite musical of all time. Yeah. Wow. It is. It's it's up there. It's powerful. Yeah. It's a great movie. I Absolutely. A great pick. That's Cody. a good pick. Great yeah. pick. My number two, the most recent one I've seen because, and I only because I went, I went over two decades before seeing it mm. because I just, the cover, the name, didn't care. Didn't want to see it. But then I was at my mom and dad's house We after we'd been married. I think we may have even had Nate at the time. And my dad and I stayed up late, and I saw that he'd recorded it. And I said, is that movie any good? He said, what? What do you mean, is this movie any good? Sit down right now and watch this with me. It was the made-for-TV version, but I have seen the uncut full version. My number two movie of all time that to this day I think is maybe the greatest dramatic movie ever made, The Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> You're going to laugh. I have never seen that. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. It's number one all time on uh, IMDb. And IMDb, actually, now it's number two. Is it? Yeah, they bumped it to number two. I'm kind of like you. They have the Godfather number one because the mafia got to them. <laughs> I'm kind of like you, though. Looking at the cover, I'm thinking, ah, uh, this wouldn't be anything I'd get into, but maybe I need never to Never judge it a book by its cover. Yeah, yeah no, the, the Shawshank Redemption. There's nothing blowing up. Hmm. There's no, there's no live, there's no crazy motorcycle chases. There's no getting into a verbal promo battle with each other. It's just a guy who has to go to jail for a crime he didn't commit, has to, has to endure and make the best of it, huh. goes through literal hell in this situation, wow. chooses to maintain a good attitude. And then at the end of the movie, you discover he probably could have left earlier. Hmm. By the and by the and by the end of it, you figure you find there's a there's a level of 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 just redemption and hope, and never give up on it. Matter of fact, that's one that's one of the lines in the movie, uh, and, and a lot of people consider it um, Morgan Freeman's greatest role ever is Red, and Morgan Freeman says hope is a dangerous thing. There's no place for it. We're hope in this place, and and um, and uh, um, I, Dufresne, uh, Andy Dufresne says to him. And says, "Hope is the hope is the greatest. Hope is a good thing, maybe the best thing." Was that his first movie that he did? No, no, he's, no, he's no, he's he's done he's done many movies. Many movies. Okay. Yeah, this was, but like I said, the iconic, 
because because oh. because he narrates the movie. Okay. So yeah, th- that's where kind of the iconic thing of let's get Morgan Freeman to write to read this His voice. That's kind of where it came from. He's the narrator of this movie. So when you watch it, you hear him talking. Yeah, I liked Andy Dufresne from the very beginning. You know, it, it's <laughs> it's just got it's just got that it's 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 just got that that feel of it. But like I said, it's it's kind of sound like Forrest Gump. There. <laughs> no, Forrest Gump sound more like this. Um, I like grits. Um, no, Man, you made me want to go see that. I've, but, ne- I've um, never seen Pastor, it. Pastor, I'm telling you. you uh, parts of it. Parts I, of it. I, I'm telling you guys, you've got to. Reco- you put it, on, it's, it comes on once a year, at least somewhere on a network. DVR it, watch the TV version. And just, and just again, sit down and let let this let these characters tell you a story. Okay. And, what, and what, the biggest thing that baffled me is this came out of the mind of Stephen King. Wow. It came out of the mind of a horror writer, so it's not it's not a horror movie, not at all, not it's at all. It, it's 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 a drama, but w- but more than anything, it's it's simply just a it's a tale of a it's the it's the story of a man. Huh. It's a story of a character who who go who the world is trying to break him. The world is trying to make him conform to to just give up. You know, d- d- just just throw in the towel. Who cares if you're innocent? Yeah, whatever. But he never lets go. Wow. He he endures through all of it. He he helps people when he can. He looks for opportunities to serve others. Hmm. And then when he finally gets a glimmer of hope, he takes it. It's just it's just one of those. It's it's an inspirational moment. And the cover that everybody sees and laughs at. When you get to that, if you don't have a tear in your eye, you don't have a soul. Wow. It is powerful. Hmm. It is absolutely powerful. So yeah, wow. if you if you've never seen the Shawshank Redemption, again, watch the TV version because there's some <laughs> stuff that if you watch the unedited version, I, I highly recommend you don't. But watch the TV version. I'm telling you guys, wow. it will leave you floored. It is a powerful movie. Awesome. Absolutely powerful. Okay, yeah. Pastor, our, our number one. What is your number one? My sir? Number one, Favorite Avatar. Favorite. You're kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the disappointment <laughs> on his face. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. My number one movie. I'm playing every sound drop I have. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and once again. <laughs> you guys you guys were so like, are you serious? <laughs> I had a feeling you were joking. I think enough of you thought he was serious. You were you were borderline mad. You were like, he built it up. I was like, wait, is he throwing it out over and over again because he it truly is his favorite? <laughs> No, okay. In all seriousness, I know time My wise. We gosh. Gotta move. <laughs> My favorite movie of all time <laughs> is The Kingdom of Heaven with Orlando Bloom. <laughs> What's funny is I've heard you say this too, so I should have known better. I don't know why, but that movie speaks to me. I think it's a lot of this young man is lost. He don't know what he's gonna do in his life. He meets his dad for the first time. I love the era of the knights and the medieval feel like you like civil war. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just, we got to do what we got to do. And uh, the whole gist of it is they end up in Jerusalem. He's in the, uh, he's fighting for Jerusalem against Islam and the, the, the the soldiers there. But the point is this, at the end of this movie, and I don't want to give it all away. He realizes the kingdom of heaven is not a place. It's not the stuff because as he told he told those in the Islamic army, he says, listen, before I give up these people, I will burn every Christian and Muslim place to the ground that causes men to fight. He goes, I realize that the kingdom of heaven is not this. The kingdom of heaven is here and here. Yeah. And so just so powerful. But the whole point of the movie ends up saving all these people in Jerusalem, all all religions, races, that it just wasn't a certain. And he pulls men out to fight and do what no one can do on their own. It's just a Man, it's just an awesome movie, and it's it's one of those rite of passages for a young boy too. Yeah, his father knights him and gives him this quote, smacks him in the face with this metal hand. He says, "And that's so you'll remember <laughs> what you're called to do." Man, I just oh, man. that's Orlando <laughs> Bloom. <laughs> Orlando Bloom. I just Legolas. Got a, I just got a garden. <laughs> <laughs> of chest hair. I'm, Gross. I'm just kidding. Now, anyways, you need to change your shirt after that. Yeah, no, <laughs> man. It, I just hope. I just wish. And my hope is I can be half the man that will just do an impossible man, whatever God says to do, yeah. just do it in the face of adversity and odds. Man, I could talk about this all day. I'm awesome. Not, I'm going to be quiet. So that's my favorite movie, number one. I will say I have seen it only once, and I saw it in theaters, and it did floor me. It's, oh, a, it's a great movie. Man, so powerful. Yep. Have you seen it, Cody, ever? Um, Kingdom no. of Heaven? Never? <laughs> Yep. Again, again, seek it if you if you it's want. PG-13. Yeah, it's PG thirteen. It's a good. Um, it's a good movie though. There's blood and guts in it, but it's not yeah. the extreme like Saving Private Ryan or things right. like that. So. Yep. 
Cody, what's your favorite movie of all time? <clears throat> My favorite movie of all time, from director to film score to the cast wow. to the original source, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yes. And specifically of those three, I mean, there's not much. Um, there's not a drop off much between them. No. I like two and three the most, but one is very, very good. Yes. Um, but two is my favorite. Two Towers. Yeah. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. It is my favorite for two scenes. Return of the Teen has some awesome scenes as well. Yes. Scenes as well. But in The Two Towers, when Gandalf the White, nerd alert, let's, you know, we probably don't want to yeah, flash that. I think I still have that thing somewhere. <laughs> uh, when Gandalf withdraws. Saruman's possession, basically, mm -hmm. from King Theoden. Yep. That is a, I mean, that is a that is a direct uh, illustration of Christ withdrawing yeah. the enemy yeah. from our lives, right? Yes. And, um, you know, I, I don't have the script right in front of me, but, I, you know, he says, I withdraw you like, I, like a poison from a, wound. From, from a wound. And just just the power in the script. Yeah. You will not kill me. You didn't. You will not kill him. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. I mean that that's the, that's a direct analogy. You can tell I love this Christ. movie too. <laughs> and then of course the scene at the end when when they're fighting at Helm's Deep and the orcs are just they're overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like man, they put up a great fight, and they're just they're just they're gonna die here, and evil's gonna come out on top. And Gandalf's promise, he says, on the third day. On the third day, look to the east. And it's at that moment of I'm getting goosebumps. I'm yeah. such a dork here, man. <laughs> yeah. But it's at the moment where defeat. I mean, uh, Aragorn and Gimli, they've basically given up, and they say, let's just ride out of here. Take as many of these guys as we can. <laughs> and they hear you hear the horn. Yes. Of Rohan. Yes. I believe. And Gandalf. You know, he's this wizard, and it's this bright light. I mean, again, a direct analogy, yes. a direct illustration to the coming of Christ. To the coming of Christ. Light shines. This right. light shines. <laughs> Do you remember what Gimli does before they, mar they, they march out? He blows the trumpet. He blows, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, and isn't it the gate that they're fighting from, the eastern gate to? Helm's Deep. Uh, Helm's right. Steve. But they, they come from the eastern horizon. Yeah, the eastern yes. horizon. Yes. yes. And so the horn blows. That's a great point. I didn't think of that. The horn blows. Gandalf shows up, and he's on his white horse, this radiance around him. All of a sudden, all this ho all these horsemen, thousands of horsemen, <laughs> are behind him. And as they charge down the hill, they have the high ground. Wow. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Anakin. <laughs> they have the high it's ground, over, and they're charging down, and they just obliterate the rest of the army. Yep. Wow. And then even as as they're charging, and he and he holds up his staff, it's this blinding light that the guy, the the orcs are just you know they're blinded and they're turning and just the 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 analogies of so good of Christ and yeah Cody and I have had several conversations wow. about Lord of the Rings. I'll I'll go ahead and spoil right now. It's in my honorable mentions the whole trilogy. Yeah. It almost made my list honestly. It's it's so good. We've talked about the reverence of the of the of the series and how Peter Jackson made sure he honored the work of Tolkien in making it. But it's funny, when Tolkien wrote The Lord of the Rings, he gave it to C.S. Lewis and said, I'm working on this. Will you read this and tell me what you think? C.S. Lewis read as much as he had written so far and brought it back to him and said, you know this is the gospel, right? Wow. And he, he said, what are you talking about? It's got orcs and hobbits and and men and elves or whatever. He's like, yeah, but look at this, 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 and this. He's like, that, that's that's Christ and that's sin. And da, da, da. <laughs> And Tolkien said, how does this keep happening? How does this keep coming out of me? But wow. but it, it comes to that place, yeah, when, you, when, you're, when your heart belongs to the Lord, everything you do is going to have him in it. It, it just, right. it's a, it's, it, in my opinion, as much as I love the Dark Knight trilogy, I think Lord of the Rings is the greatest trilogy of all time. Yes, it is. I think it is, personally. Yeah. It's awesome. It, like, literally, it made my number six. It almost made my list. Very few Very sequels close. are better than the original. Yes. And like I said, I think you could make a strong argument two and three are better than one. Yeah. Wow. So... One one is a little slow, I think, at points. Mm -hmm. But again, there's so many moments in one that you're like, okay, if this moment doesn't happen, the rest of the trilogy doesn't make sense. Wow, that's what I love about it. One's a great story. My number one favorite movie of all time, men. We got to take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together right now on this hallowed ground, 
we too shall be destroyed just as they were. I don't care if you like each other or not, but you will respect each other. And just maybe you'll learn to play this game like men. My, my favorite movie of all time. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. That's a good movie. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Will Patton. The true story of Coach, of Coach Herbert Boone taking over T.C. Williams High School. Came up there to coach George Washington uh, High School. They merged George Washington High School and with, the, with T.C. And they made T.C. Williams High School. And so they gave him the job to appease the black folk in the community that you've got a black head coach. But they gave him the stipulation, you lose a game, you're done. Wow. And Will Patton plays um, Coach um, Yost, who was the coach of the white school. And he has, he has offers coming in to go and coach at other places. He chooses to stay because his boys want to play for him, and they wow. won't play for the new coach. And so he's like, I'll come. I'll, I'll swallow my pride, swallow my ego, and I'll coach under you. I'll coach the defense. And Herbert says, as a part of my team strategy. I've never seen an assistant coach in the name of the paper for losing a game. Wow. There's just so many moments <laughs> in it. But what I love the most about this movie, and I didn't even know it at the time, I watched it for the first time with my football team. Because everybody was like, that movie, because that movie had just come out. And so all the, all the players and friends on my team said, because of that movie, guys, we are so screwed. The coach, <laughs> the coach is going to wake us up at 3 in the morning and go for a run. And we did. And we did. Wow. The coach is going to put us through all these horrific drills, and he did. The, 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 so, there's so much from that movie in terms of just football that is powerful. Wow. But what I love about it is, in college, my favorite professor at Southeastern University, shout out to you, Dr. Bill Hackett. Bill Hackett. Do, Dr. Bill Hackett taught uh, pastoral leadership. And in that, in that uh, class, he said, for one of your final assignments, I'm going to assign you to go and watch a movie, and I want you to write down every single leadership principle you see within this movie. And I promise you, you will not find another movie out there currently in circulation that has more leadership guidance and leadership principles from a biblical perspective than this movie. Wow. And he said, go watch Remember the Titans. Wow. There is so many moments in this movie from how you deal with conflict, how you deal with with having to, again, follow someone when you used to be the leader, how to lead from a perspective and then learn to learn to be flexible when, when the people around you aren't accepting of that perspective, wow. how to come together as a team when you have people that just simply don't like each other, wow. how to come together as a team when the, re, when the reason you don't like each other is something as stupid as the color of your skin. Huh. There, there's so many elements of leadership and how to navigate them and, and when you need to cut someone off your team and, mm-hmm. and when you need to be willing to take the bullet and what happens when your star player goes down? How do you mm-hmm. rally and how do you still go out and fight? There's just so many moments in this movie. And again, every time I've watched it literally once a year, probably <laughs> since it came out, it is my favorite movie of all time because it teaches so many valuable principles about life, about family, about being a man, about being a woman, yeah. about about being on a team, about being the, the servant, mm-hmm. about football. There's so many great things about it. It, it literally, to me, is almost a per, is probably awesome. a perfect movie. So one of the greatest movies of all time. Very good. And my favorite of all time. So, yeah, I love that movie. Remember the Titans, my number one. Remember the Titans. Pastor, what honorable mentions did you have off the top of your head if, oh, you, have, if you don't have them? Greatest Showman was one. Uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings was the second. Man, there's just so many. I, I enjoyed Creed, the Rocky movies. Yes. But it was just hard to put in my top five. So. Yep. Cody, any honorable mentions you have? Uh, Braveheart. Braveheart. Mm-hmm. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Uh, powerful. That's a, that's a powerful one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sure there's more off the top of my head. Like I just said, I wasn't prepared with honorable mentions, but as we as we were talking and I was thinking, I'm like, man, those those two are up there. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Avatar. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to watch Avatar. Uh, okay, no, you don't. Go no, ahead. the sequel's coming out this year. Yeah. Um, my uh, honorable mentions, I have, uh, in, for along a lot of the same reasons as Remember the Titans, I have Miracle. Oh, yes. Very with good with Kurt Russell, the Miracle on Ice, the USA hockey team that beat the Russians in 1980. Yes. Uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I said. Uh, a few good men. Yes, great movie. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> it's good. Uh, Back to the Future. Back to the Future is ah. is is almost a perfect movie. Mm. It's such a good movie. And then my final one, King Arthur. 
2004 Clive Owen. Oh yes. Great movie. I Great movie. Too. What I love about it, what I love about it is it's not the typical mythological magic sword and Merlin with the big wizard hat and n- none of that. This is no, what if King Arthur was a true soldier in the time period they really believe he lived in? How would it have looked like and they made this movie? It is really good. That was uh, It's really good. Uh, Monty Python in the Quest for the Holy Grail. That's what you're talking about, right? <laughs> We will cut that. (laughs) (laughs) Why did you get a couple of coconuts? (laughs) We are the knights who say me. (laughs) Terrible movie. Mm. It's funny, but it's it's terrible. Bring out your dad. (laughs) Uh, Have you seen that movie all the way through? Multiple times. I have not seen that one either. It. I have it. Pause for awkward (laughs) silence. (laughs) Take two. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's you, funny. Sorry you watching and listening on. Well, and it, it's funny too because it's podcast. the same the same six actors yes, it's, are it's, reprising different roles throughout the movie too. Yeah, they're a comedy troupe and so they made this movie and they just recur wow. yeah, roles throughout it. Well, okay, everybody, that's our top five favorite movies of all time. I know this one's a little longer than usual, but I think it was worth it to share these moments and memories with each other and what we love about movies. And why don't you tell us in the comments, what was your top five, what are your top five favorite movies of all time? Maybe there's a few in there that we need to, we need to take notice of and we need to watch. Uh, Thinking right now about the calendar guys. I know we have, um, I know coming up here in October, we have a, uh, Trunk or Treat's just around the corner, Pastor. Why don't you tell them about what Trunk or Treat is and what, we, what we're doing for it? Yeah, our church, we're going to have people come, and they're going to have cars all in our parking lot, and we give lots of candy away. We give information about our church. We do free food. Just a fun night where we just get together for a safe place to for people to come and just fellowship together, and we get to meet all the kids in the, in the community and the neighborhood. Yeah, and it's on Halloween, in case you hadn't guessed. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing it on Halloween night. Yeah, and this th- your theme is, funny enough, superheroes. So I'm Batman. Yep. yep. I was going to say Avatar, but uh, I thought that joke is pretty much over right now. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Just write it, write it, write it, write it, write it, write it out, yeah. write it out. Um, Cody, what about what about for the youth? I know y'all getting ready to gear up for Surge Convention. Is it too late to sign up for that and get involved? No, not at all. Uh, if you're interested, if you if you have students sixth through twelfth grade uh, that you think would have a great time, we'll be up in Fort Wayne, November eighteenth and nineteenth. So we're a ways away. Uh, but I was joking with a parent yesterday. Us youth pastors are like vultures when it comes to the good <laughs> hotels mm-hmm. and, and convention areas. And so uh, I have some rooms reserved. However, um, let me know as soon as you can that they will for sure be going so I can make sure we have enough rooms. Absolutely. And I just want to say thank you, all of you, for watching this podcast and for participating in it with us. Make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe, click that bell. So every time we post in a video, you'll get notified immediately that we uh, that we just dropped a video. Those of you watching in the audio podcast form, leave us a five-star rating. Leave us your comments. Leave us any questions you have. Guys, I'm excited that when this drops the next Thursday on September the 29th on Thursday, we're going live. Wow. And so we're going to actually be reading uh, uh, some questions that have been submitted to us. It's not too late. If you have questions you want us to read off live and answer live, uh, you can email those to us at madisonassemblypodcast at gmail.com, or you can just drop them in the comments, like we said. Uh, But not only are we going to be answering pre-submitted questions, if you watch us live that day, we're going to take your questions right out of the chat, and we're going to answer them as they come in. So, uh, guys, I I just love doing this with y'all. It's one of the highlights of my week. I love the interaction, and I love being able to to share life and bounce stuff off of each other. So I want them to be able to have a part in that and get their questions answered and feel like they're a part of this too, because you are as a listener, you're just as much part of this as we are. Yeah. So awesome. Any last minute thoughts or, or things I want to say? Bum, 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 bum. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Goodbye. I thought you were doing Indian Jones. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Goodbye. And we'll see you next time.